Hey guys, today we're going to look at View X. We're going to do it quickly in 10 minutes, so let's begin. So if you guys don't know, View X is a state management library pattern and library for Vue.js. So you may, if you're in the React world, you may have heard of Redux. You may have heard of patterns called like Flux. So they're very similar. Both Vuex and Redux are kind of based on something called Flux, which is a type of pattern where we're dispatching actions and we have different types of state. So um, we're going to go ahead and create just a really simple app. So if you can see right here, this is our app. We have a welcome message. We have some messages that are coming from our Vuex, and then we have a button that increments. So nothing too special here, but this is really important to us because we just want to learn some really basics of how this works. So let's go ahead and just create the basic part of our app here right now. So you can see here, I just went in and just copied and pasted some basic HTML code. I included script tag for both Vue and Vuex from a CDN here. So if we go new view, and then we'll call app, and we'll call, actually we go EL, and then we'll call this app. And just to make sure things are working, we're gonna have a data function here. It's gonna return an object, and that object we're gonna have welcome. And welcome, we're gonna put in hello world. And then inside here, of course, inside our body, we're going to have a div tag, we're gonna have it ID equals app, and remember you're always gonna to have to have at least one div tag in here for your view application. And then we're gonna put in double brackets, and we're gonna put in welcome. So we're just gonna make sure this works. Refresh it, okay, we see hello world. So we know we got that working. So let's just, let's do this. H, we'll put it in H1 tags. We're not gonna do any CSS or anything in this. We're just gonna do some really basic HTML and then we're gonna introduce Vuex here. So let's go ahead and create Vuex. Now, you guys are probably wondering, I'm actually using just a, a single HTML file here, but we could certainly do everything we're doing here using Vue CLI. So in a future episode, I'll go ahead and do a more advanced look at Vuex and we'll go ahead and put it into a Vue CLI project. This actually works just as well. I mean, pretty much everything I'm doing here you can do inside uh, Vue CLI. So if you learn it using this way, it's the same thing basically. So I'm gonna do a const store. I'm gonna have it new vuex.store. And I'm gonna refresh it. Okay, my hello world's big. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the inspector here. Let's make sure if we have any errors that I can catch it before it gets too late. And then inside here, I'm going to create uh, some ways, um, some part of Vuex. Now, like I said, Vuex is a way, a state management pattern. So normally in Vue, and the reason you may want to use something like Vuex, especially if you have larger applications, is that you end up using a lot of props and you end up passing a lot of data from one component to an, another. And there are things like uh, buses that you can create in Vue, in, uh, Vue but it really becomes pretty bloated after a while and your data can be kind of stored in a lot of different places. So what the idea here is with Vuex is that we're storing all the data in one central place and any component can actually get it. So that is really important because we don't want to have to, let's say we have a component, like we have component one here and then it inherited, it, comp, component two is a child of comp one and then we have a child of comp one, you know, child of child of comp one. I mean, you can just keep on going and you would have to actually pass everything from comp one to child comp one to child comp one. And so the data can be all over the place. It's not perfect and things can get complicated. Now that's not to say you would put all your data or all your, your, your state inside the store. You may actually be create, you may actually have some local state in some of your view components, but some things that you may want to share between multiple things in, in your app you want to put in the store. So the first thing we do is there's four things we need to learn here in this 10 minutes. We're going to look at state. We're going to look at mutations. We're going to look at actions. And finally, we're going to look at getters. So these are the four that we care about. So in our state, this is where we're going to define 
kind of the data for our application that we want to store and 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 have it be available throughout the application in all our Vue.js instances and components. So let's just make right here, we'll create a message. We'll call it welcome. Well, we'll call it, yeah, let's call it message. And we'll put in hello world. And then, well, let, we'll put it a different message. We'll call it hello from Vuex. So we don't get confused. And then we'll put a counter and we'll set it to zero. Now, if we want to access this message and count, there's a couple ways to do that. So first, if it's really simple, we actually, um, getters are one way of retrieving information from our store. Uh, we can actually access it too without a getter. So we can do uh, computed property here. So we'll do computed here and then I'll put a colon here. Make sure I'm doing this right. And then we'll name a computer property. So let's just call it, we can call it message. Doesn't, can have the same name, doesn't matter. And then in the message, we uh, return it, return it. So we can return store.state dot, and we called it message. And then inside here, we can grab message. So let's see if that works. All right, so here's a hello from Vuex. So you see here, we're gra grabbing the information from our store and we're displaying it inside our H2 tag here by just using a computed property. But let's say that you wanted to do, you wanted your getter to, let's say you wanted to make some kind of modification of this. And instead of having a computed property and doing some modification to it here, you can create a getter so every component gets it from the same place. So this makes a lot of sense in larger apps. So we can do this. We can put in the getter, we can call it message here. And it actually takes a couple of variables. It takes a state. Well, it takes one argument state. And then we can return state dot message, which is the name of our, our variable here, message. And then we can do something like to upper case something like that. And then instead of doing restore.stadium.message, we can do store.getter.message. So we save it there. And message of undefined. So let me make sure I got this right. Getters. Had a missing an S. So OK, you can see here, it's all capital letters. Hello from Vuex. I'll make that bigger. So hello from Vuex. And we know it's working. So now instead of getting it directly from the state, we're getting it from the getters. So you can see, you can imagine that you can set up a bunch of different getters here and do a bunch of different things um, and have all your components grab it and you're not going to have to, you know, repeat the same code in every single component. So that's one way to doing it. So another thing we can do is mutations. So let's take a look at our um, counter here. So let's go ahead, we can do another computed property and let's create another getter. So we'll call it counter. Once again, it has an argument of state and we can return state dot count. And then inside here, our computer property, we can also do the same thing here. We can have a count and then it can return store dot getters dot count. So if we refresh it, and we use the name counter, and we called it here, we'll put in count. There it is. So you can see zero here. So we're getting it from this computed property. It's returning it out of here, just the state.count. But what if what if we wanted to do some kind of mutation on this and change it? So let's create a button here, and we'll just do a button. We're gonna have a click action attached to it. And we're gonna call it pressed, and we're gonna just call it. We'll call it increment counter. And if we save it, we have increment counter. Of course, we're gonna get an error because we haven't created this action yet. But let's create it. So we'll go back down here right after computed. 
we're going to create something called method. I think it's methods with an S. And that's going to be an object. And then we're going to have our pressed. And then in our pressed, we're going to do something. So let's save it. All right, so we no longer have it, but this press doesn't do anything. So what we can do now is we can have a mutation in here. So let's create a mutation that increments the counter. So we're going to call it increment. Increment. And we're almost up out of the 10 minutes. So this can be a few minutes after 10, but that's okay. We're going to have a state on it and a payload. And then in the state and payload, we're going to uh, we're going to do state dot count, and then we're going to plus equal the payload. So what this is saying is, every time you do the increment, it's going to take the state. It's going to take something you pass into it, and then equal it, add it to it. So then what we could do here is we can do instead of uh, instead of uh, getting it, we can do this. We can do store, and we use something called commit. And we do commit, and then we can call the name of the mutation, which we call increment, and we can add 10 to it. So let's try that. Okay, that works. So basically, we've reproduced what we had before, but really, really, really quickly. I know we're over our 10 minute allotment, we're going on to 11 minutes, but we really quickly, if you go to actions here, we can have an action called, I don't know, increment as well. And then inside the action here, we can put inside a state and a payload as well. And then inside the action, we can do uh, state dot dispatch. And then we put in the name increment. And then we put in payload. Now the reason we have actions is because you can actually access the mutations directly. But if you have something that's asynchronous, then you must use actions. Mutations are always synchronous. So this is always synchronous. And actions can be asynchronous or synchronous. So if I had some kind of timer here, a set timeout, then I would use it. So then inside here, actually, excuse me, this is store.state.commit. And then in here, instead of doing store.commit, I do store dot dispatch and then the name of it, which you call increment, and then we put in I don't know, let's say twenty. We save it, refresh it. You see now it's going by twenty. So that is a really really quick way of doing Vuex. I hope you guys like the video. If you like these type of videos, please click that subscribe button. And in fact, I'm giving away a copy of my book, a ebook copy of my book. All you need to do is subscribe to this channel. Make sure you click on that subscribe and then tell me below why you guys like Vuex. Tell me a little bit about Vuex. Do you know anything about it? Let me know. Thanks. Take care. Bye.